Hello, I want to put an intro at the front of this before we start the garden tour. I want to let those that may be new here know that this is basically a new garden. We bought this home in the two and a half acres last year in February, but by the time we moved in and got settled, I had missed pretty much all of the spring planting season. So I only planted a few things. So this year is basically the year I was able to plan over the winter and actually be here in in the home and on the property and really decide what I wanted to plant and how I wanted everything to look. So you're getting a brand new, pretty much starting from scratch. Yes, this property was built in 1974 and the original builder and owner who unfortunately passed away 10 years ago was a gardener. So we have come in, we've had to do a lot of cleanup and get this place back to its original glory and start putting my own touches on it. So I just wanted to let any of you know that may be new here, that's what's happening. And I also want to add, I saw this on a blog post and I'm keeping it forever now. And somebody had put on there, remember, it's only a weed if you don't want it there. So let's get started. All right, so it is 7.45 in the evening on May 31st. <laughs> so I'm gonna try to hurry up and get this garden tour done before the sun goes down, you guys. We have the baseball diamond there with the soft serve false cypress and the Japanese hollies, and they haven't grown any. And same thing over here. And if you're new here watching this video for the first time, eventually a circle drive is going to come all the way around. So that's why you see those little islands out there. They will make sense eventually. Right here in the middle, we have the bird bath and the new bed I made. And the last video I did, I think it was the last video, I put out zinnia seeds, zinnia carpet seeds, all around the outer circle. Well, it appears the birds have eaten them all. <laughs> They're gone, so I hope they enjoyed. But here we are, this is the bed, and in the bird bath there, I have white wave petunias, and they are gorgeous. I have some creeping Jenny, and right in the middle, I have some salvia that I seeded myself indoors. So I did have a hosta in there and it was getting burnt alive. So I have moved him to the secret garden. And then as you can see here, I named the house after the lady that built this house and was the gardener of this property. In here I have, and this is so exciting. Look at these marshmallow daisies starting to bloom. But I do think something's been eating this stuff because it's just dying. I have some Minarda here. So I'm just hoping against hope that it will, some uh, lavender bee balm is what these are. And I'm hoping they will bounce back. I have some Vinca, but it's all trying to die. I have some <laughs> cat's mint, cat's pajamas, some cat mint there. And there's three of those, but they're all looking pitiful. So I don't know, fingers crossed everything will bounce back. So I have more daisies here. The daisies seem to be the winners and I actually divided these daisies and they're all doing splendid. But the bird bath itself, beautiful. And you can't tell the travesty going on <laughs> uh, from the lane. So that's good. <laughs> so that's what's going on here. Um, the daisies are the only thing looking like they're pulling through and no germinated zinnias <laughs> because the birds obviously had a feast. Okay, so in the front, in these front beds here, I have planted ooh, probably 300. There's probably 300 caladium bulbs in there. They are the white Christmas caladiums and I am waiting for them to emerge and they're going to be beautiful and I also put them in this uh, little bed back here too. So I hope they come up. It's going to be Wonderful if they do. I hope I'm not shaking this too much. And then here is the front porch. And my Boston Fern loves its life right there. It's doing fantastic. And then in my planters here with the spiral boxwoods, I have ivy that when we moved in was growing on the house. <laughs> so I rooted it inside in a jar and planted it in there and it's taken off. It loves it. It loves it. Okay, and like I said here, can see really from the road, but we have the Japanese hollies and the soft serve, the false cypress. 
So these are gonna be beautiful when they come into their own. All right, and it's just so peaceful out here right now. I hope, I hope the sun hangs in there for us, but I am loving the round bed. Loving it, loving it. So I might have to go get a few things to fill that in since it appears some of it's going to die off. <laughs> and then here is the same baseball diamonds, what I'm calling it because it is. All right, and I have ordered some lavender fox that gets about four feet wide. And I'm going to put it right in the middle. I've got two of them on the way of these baseball diamonds. So hopefully we'll just get some color up here. My color scheme for the front is purple, white, and green. I'm trying to stick with that. We'll see. Might change my mind, but I think that's just a lovely soft serene color when you pull into the driveway those colors i just love them so here we are up here under the tree this is where i planted the bloom struck hydrangeas and <laughs> they are doing fantastic and i do have a wee white hydrangea on its way that i'm going to put right here and i did bring some cladium bulbs up here and they're planted about right there where I'm pointing out, but these are the bloom struck hydrangeas and they are a beautiful, just gorgeous. So I'm tickled for them to be babies. And then I did plant my Annabelle hydrangeas that I had in the back bed that's now exposed to full sun and they just were not loving that. Um, I moved them, they were just starts last year. So I moved them up here. Well, my husband took over the mowing and he took that one out. <laughs> he thought that was a weed. So um, in replacement, I was able to find an invincible um, hydrangea. So I'm excited. So that's gonna replace, th those are the original Annabelle's, which I've heard they, their blooms are so big, they get floppy when it rains and stuff. So I'm excited to have the new stronger version coming and it's gonna replace what he mowed over right there. But these up front are just the these bloom structs just gorgeous. I couldn't be happier with them. Just baby gorgeousness. Okay, and now we're gonna make our way to the secret garden. Okay, so that's where we were at the Endless Summer Hydrangeas. And this is where we are now. This is the, I wanted to show you guys, I planted some crystal clear calla lily collection bulbs last year and they didn't do anything. Um, they came from the Holland Bulb Farms and some of them were popping up. So I don't know what color this is gonna be. I'm really tickled though that it's here and coming up. And I have one trying to come up right here. And then this one, look at this, gorgeous. So I've got that one and that, just beautiful, super, super excited so i'm ready for those to like multiply and just fill all of this in <laughs> that'll just be so grand and my husband needs to weed eat this down right here all right to the secret garden and all i had to do was turn around and here we are okay so i just want to address before i'll just go bed by bed in here because i don't think i've done that before um i just want to address in case this shows up in the background you'll see this fridge here we that was a fridge we were using in the garage but it has had its last hurrah so what my husband's going to do he's actually going to make that a compost bin for me i'm so excited for that as well he's going to strip it all of everything and it's going to be laid on its back so you could open the handles like this and that's going to be fantastic and he's going to use all these pallets that the compost and stuff came on and like build an enclosure for it so it looks nice so i'm just tickled and that is something that has to be uh, hauled away <laughs> and you might see oh there's a bird they're so happy i just watered and there's a a bird bath over here and I filled it up with water for them. Um, some new garden art. I'm so excited for that. So I'll tell you my plans for those guys. I love whimsy. So if you're new here, whimsy is my thing. So when I see it, I just, I have to have it. I love it. Okay. So we'll just start here with this bed in the front. This is what I call the bunny bed because it's where all my little bunny uh, ornaments wound up. So <laughs> this is a hibiscus or uh, Rose of Sharon. I'm not really sure 
um, but it blooms the prettiest. Uh, they were pinkish purple last year, if I'm remembering correctly. They were super, super pretty and bright. And then here, I think this is some kind of like dwarf um, Nandina, which I have a video about <laughs> Nandina false bamboo. Um, but this thing, this is the dwarf kind, and I actually like it. I think it's really, really pretty, and it hasn't tried to like take over anything. But that's the bunny bed. And if you'll see in the beginning of the secret garden, it leads off with three beds and three entrances. And no, we did not create this, it was here. And it's taken a lot of work to get these beds cleaned out. So this year, I really didn't even bring any mulch in. I just brought in some compost. I'm just trying to get the soil back better. So in this bed, there were some existing shrubs and these are daylilies. And then I filled it in with coral and white impatience. So I am so ready for those to just grow up and just fill that in. That's gonna be so beautiful when you pull up to the front of the house. And then this bed here has existing shrubs in it. And I've moved Mondo grass where I have found it in here into this bed. So I eventually want it just to take over. But I have put some of my impatience that I seeded inside. We'll see how they do. <laughs> They're super leggy. Uh, this is my first time doing seeds, so <laughs> live and learn. Hopefully next year will be even better. And here I put a little ladybug house. I ordered that on Etsy. Isn't that so cute? And I love the paint detail. Just really, really pretty. But something was after these roses. <laughs> these are the Atlas roses uh, by Proven Winners, and they were just babies last year, and they're still babies. But anyway, I ordered this to invite the ladybugs over to come live and protect these guys right here because I want them to grow up and just love it. They have bloomed out. Um, you can see we've got some spent, spent blooms already, so I need to pinch those off. And then this is um, those onions, those purple onions. Uh, I, I forgot what they were called, but anyway, that's what these are, and I thought they would be pretty with the Atlas roses because those are like a really light peach color, and then these are supposed to bloom out purple. But I might have to move these because I don't think they're getting as much sun as they wish they had. And then those are existing shrubs there, and this bed makes an L like this. And then this bed that runs here along the garage. I don't have anything here. I want to get some pots to mirror each other on each side. But in this bed here, I have cranberry star caladium bulbs. So I'm ready for them to start making their appearance. And then I'll show you here. My daughter bought me this and I finally brought it out. Oh, I gotta go the other way. <laughs> I thought the saying was facing this way, but it says, look, welcome to Wendy's garden. And this is all in here with a bunch of trees. We've had wind. So yes, this has been raked out blew out and it just keeps coming back and there's always limbs to deal with always uh country living country life but that's what you get when you have all of these gorgeous gorgeous trees okay so i've come back over here to the bunny bed we were just over there so we're going to come back here and i'm just going to make my way around so right here this is filled with gorgeous daylilies that are in bloom spectacular. There's the bird bath I was telling you. I filled it up for the birds so they can come get their bath. In here, I planted some alliums. None of my allium bulbs did really well this year, so I'm hoping next year they'll come back, but I think I found out why. I was watching, I think it's the middle size garden gardener. Um, she is fantastic, and her name escapes me. I think it's Alexandra. Um, anyway, she was saying that and you know my tulips that were in here didn't do so well or the daffodils um i think and from watching her video i think she's correct we just didn't have and i wasn't out here watering didn't have enough rain for these bulbs to perform the way they should have so uh, that's what i'm gonna go with all right and this is what i call the gnome bed and i love it and there's there's the reason why it's called this and look at this pretty butterfly house i just received this i ordered it from gardeners.com and oh it's so pretty i love it with the copper and the butterflies 
Oh, starting to lose the sun, you guys. I might have to pick this up in the morning, but I'll, I'll just see how it looks uh, when I'm editing. I'm in this bed here. There's a bunch of liripe. And now that I've started watering and kind of gotten this cleared out, it is trying to spread all in here, which I don't mind. The greenery is fine by me. This tree is in here. It's kind of like the centerpiece. I do not know what kind of tree or shrub this is, but it's still here. And if you see the original walkthrough on this, you couldn't even see out. If you were walking through here, this was filled with what I will call shrubs, but they were not. They were weeds that grew into trees. <laughs> so we had to clear all of this out. And that's why this got the name The Secret Garden, because it seemed very, very private when we looked at this property in the house. But I did not know, because it was winter, that those were actually weeds <laughs> that had grew into trees. So in here, I have put zinnia seeds that didn't get eat. You can see they've germinated already. So I put the Sonora, which is a uh, which is a salmon color a zinnia, white and deep purple. So those are going to be beautiful. So those are starting to germinate there. I've stuck in some gomfrina that I did myself indoors. It's looking a little pitiful, but I think it's going to, to like make it. At least a few of them. See, look, this is trying to get a bud. So we'll see. Here, I put some zinnia seeds and uh, gomfrina. So all in the little holes. So there's that. And the birds are just loving life, aren't they? So we're gonna head here. I did not do anything to this bed, but clear it out and cut down the daffodils. So there are beautiful daffodils in here. So I just kind of cut those down, letting them die off the rest of the way. And I have some oriental lily bulbs I'm gonna fill in here that I picked up on clearance. So I hope they do well. And then there's the back of the bunny bed. And then here's the middle bed on the back of the middle bed. So. This has proven winners, uh, Wisteria and Patience. There's four of those. And then two hostas that I planted in here last year and they were really little. And this one has been getting eaten and I found the culprits the other morning, two cute little brown bunnies. <laughs> so I've been out here spraying everything with uh, Nemo. <laughs> and so they have really, like I have planted them a whole salad bar because give you a glimpse back here whoo there's a whole salad bar so yes i'm trying to protect everything so this bed directly across from it i call the king frog bed because of my little ornament he's wearing a little crown i call him the king frog so in here this was already here um on the property so i just kept it it's so cute because i love frogs i love whimsy but these are monrovia uh, calla lilies i planted one last year you guys and it was an orangey uh, color and so there we go it's multiplied and i am just waiting to get some blooms out of those and of course day lilies and the day lilies you guys i don't know if i said before if you are new here they were already here so i've been trying to keep all of the things that were here and that, that's, that I can keep that's not um, dying or diseased um, and keep it. So I just love it. I think they're absolutely beautiful. This middle bed has absolutely nothing in it except this beautiful magnolia tree that has a few blooms. It's been blooming out pretty good. Um, I'm super short, so I won't be able to get that one, but I will be able to get this one. So it's absolutely beautiful. So this bed, when we moved in, was overtaken by one pot it was one medium-sized pot full of ivy, and it had taken over this entire bed. There was a big tree right here that was just removed. So, this is just a blank slate with some, uh, they're weeds, but they're like little trees, and they are the most aggravating things. But here's my new whimsy, you guys. I got these off of Grandin Road. Aren't these cute? Look at these sheep. <laughs> Harlequin sheep, have you ever? So, I have ordered a... Uh, some green fake turf like I think it's six feet and four feet wide so that is my idea I'm just gonna put that down for now because I don't know what to do with this big bed right now um, so that'll take up some room and then I've, I've got some lamium coming that I'm just gonna pop on each side and hope it just starts filling in the empty spaces so that's my plan for this bed as of now 
Okay, so I kind of got sidetracked because it's leaving over here. This bed in the very back is what I call the lollipop tree. <laughs> lollipop tree bed or gumdrop tree. Um, usually lollipop tree is what I call it. And I've been cleaning it out and I've got some spirea and a mountain, um, I think it's an aha uh, hydrangea. So that's what I'm gonna put back here and I might, ha I might throw some seeds in here too. But we'll see. So, yeah, this bed is nothing but a few little, um, well, they're weeds to me because I don't want them there. So, <laughs> I got to come out here and do some picking back here. And then in the very back bed, you guys, new things. <laughs> Starting to really fill this one in and I'm really tickled with it. So, this is what I was saying, the salad bar. So, I've had to spray everything with neem oil. <laughs> so, I've gotten some new Coast to Coast hostas. And I love that pop of color back here. And guys, I am determined to have some euchre back here. So, I have a spearmint right here. So, fingers crossed on those guys. So, that's going to be great when they fill in. Right here, I have planted some Proven Winners Double Delight Begonias. That's Rose, uh, Blush Rose, and Prim Rose. And they're just absolutely gorgeous. And I think these are for hanging baskets, but I wanted them in the ground, and I think they're going to work out great. So, once they fill in, they'll just be little mounds of beautiful begonias in here. So, and this was already here, and I think this is another one, the dwarf nandinas, I think. I don't quote me on that, I'm not sure. And this is another rose of Sharon or hibiscus, but it's struggling, and I've been watering it, extra watering it, so we'll see what happens with that. So brand new, back here, I planted a June hosta, and these guys are some kind of false holly that were here. I was keeping them because they were kind of making a little barrier, but they look like they're on the struggle bus, so they might have to come out. But we'll see. But that's a June hosta back there. An autumn fern here that's brand new. And this is purple shamrock. And weevils came back here. And I know you guys seen where these uh, hookah back here were coming up. They have eaten them all down. So I have been spraying Nemo like crazy. This is my Delta Dawn Hookra. And you can see it was really taking a hit there. And look at these guys. Look, they they ate them down to the nubs. These were grape expectations. And then I had a berry smoothie one right here. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping they recover. <laughs> so, okay, and then here I have Autumn Frost Hostas. So I just kind of brought these guys over to also just give me that bright, cause this is the really the darkest bed back here on the back, the most shade, except for this one. But this one, I just, you see all the way to the back and you just want that pop of color. This is a Jack of Diamonds uh, Brunera, had two of them, one died last year, but this one got eat up too, but it's bouncing back. This is Hostin, I don't know the name of it for the life of me. And then this is a little cupcake hosta that I planted last year in a different spot and I moved it here. So it's it's doing well. And by cupcake, it's gonna be small. And then all back here, I have planted Florida Elise. Sorry, you guys, <laughs> something's rustling somewhere. Florida Elise Caladiums. Anyway, it's giving me the heebie-jeebie. So I'm waiting for those guys to pop up. So they're gonna be pinky colored and that's gonna be lovely. But I think I see some of the one of the Florida Elise. Look there. <laughs> yeah, so one's coming up, but I put them all all back here. So let's hope they all come up. All right. So here we are on this side. Okay, I think it's the birds making all that. Inside the bird cage, I have an impatient, a white impatient, but I think I'm gonna have to take this out of here because it doesn't matter how much I water it, it looks like it's struggling in there in the bird cage. So I'm gonna have to find something else to do. Oh, and I don't think I said that's a Miss America hosta here and a Woo La La. So they had a rough time in shipping <laughs> and they are just now bouncing back. So that's that bed right there. And as everything grows and matures, I think it's just going to be beautiful. Okay, I hope we're still getting good light. Let's take a quick detour. We're gonna walk back here. If you're new here, you know my daughter's getting married on the property. So this is 
where the altar is going to be. So I'll, these are my David Austin roses. <laughs> this is the Lady of the Lake. She's a climber. And so I'm going to eventually push her back and get her trained to come up and over here. Now, I don't know how much they're going to grow before the wedding. The wedding is in four months on October 1st. So <laughs> we'll just see. At least they'll be beautiful. And it looks like Miss Ellie has been back here. <laughs> digging in this newly created a rose bed and this right here is Claire Austin and she's got a bunch of spent blooms on her something was eating her so I come out here and sprayed the neem oil on her and look she's doing great I'm so happy her leaves look a lot better all right so we do still have some cleanup that we need to do before the wedding of course and my husband is going to take out these trees if you're wondering about the wedding. So we'll have all the chairs are going to be placed here on each side. And then there's going to be a tent directly behind those chairs. So when the service is over, they can get up and just walk right into the tent for the reception. So that's going to be great. But he's going to take out these trees here. Yeah, so that's going to be lovely. This is a fire pit that was here. And this has to be dismantled. That is on our to-do list a lot on our to-do list as you see my husband just opened the swimming pool super exciting yay all right back to the secret garden this will forever be the secret garden no matter how open it is because i i don't know how to call it anything else since we moved in so here's the pilgrim hosta that was in the bird bath up front that i had to move and you can see it was getting burnt so yeah and it's going to bounce back and love it here i just know it so this is, I think this is a guacamole hosta. I, I had it in a pot when we moved here and I, I don't know what kind it was. I think guacamole, but as you can see, the little bunnies were having a feast back here. My husband had to fix um, some of the watering system. So that got sprayed <laughs> with the, the marking spray paint. These are blue Canadian hostas that I picked up on clearance earlier this year. So they're hanging in there. And then this is, just ornamental grasses that were already here and I just spread them out into the different beds. You'll, you'll just see some of it here as I found it and dug it up. I just kind of placed it in different sections, but we'll just look back right here. Oh, I just love it out here. I love coming to sit right here. If you'll notice, those are the two chairs that the squirrels really, really got a hold of over the winter and I'm looking for some chair pads. I decided we're not going to take them to the dump let's we can still use them we just need some chair pads so that's what I'm on the search for is to find chair pads that don't cost $20 a piece I can't believe how expensive everything is and there's some of my compost bags the wind was blowing when I was out here putting it out <laughs> around my hydrangeas so I just stuck it in there <laughs> so I need to get that out so this is uh my fern that did so well it lived under the gazebo last year and it loved it but I put it here I think it's great, but this is my favorite spot to sit. I love it back here. And then here we are. So this big tree here, I'm wondering if this was a good plan or not, but these hydrangeas used to be, let me go slow. I was, I'm having to hand water everything because still working on the sprinkler system right here. This tree was cut down, so that is just blazing hot sun, and the hydrangeas were not having it, or would not have it, I, <laughs> so I moved them. So these are the mini mauvettes. There's three of them, and they are, I, move, I had to move them, so I don't know. I think they had a rough time <laughs> on the transplant, but fingers crossed they'll bounce back, and here's some lavender impatiens that I seeded inside that I just put in here, so we'll see how those guys do so that's what's going on with this bed so it's just slowly but surely filling things filling areas in with things that i want so it's a process so in this bed we have more day lilies right here and then these are the little lime punches i call them fruit punch all the time <laughs> but these are the little lime punch hydrangeas and uh, i am so happy to have them they were also in that bed over there so i moved them here and they look like they're gonna do okay this one's really bushing out but i don't have any um i don't see any flower buds but they are much happier than the mini mall vets over here so i'm holding on to hope for my mini mall vets look at those daylilies just gorgeous 
So yeah, as you can see, I've had the hose, <laughs> hose out. And then the last bed of the secret garden, I call this the rock bed. And it has more of this false holly. I don't actually know what it is. Um, and a daylily I transplanted over here. And it's so pretty and orange. I love it. Absolutely love it. But yeah, not sure what it is. It looks like some kind of holly but not real holly and then i have thrown some coleus seeds and some bells of ireland seeds over in here and i don't think they're gonna do anything <laughs> but i do have some purple uh daylilies that i ordered um i forgot the name of them but i'll, I'll film when they get here so you can see but i think I, I ordered three of them so i think they'll look really pretty with these orange ones so those will eventually fill this rock bed in when we moved in there was a big dead rose right in the middle of this that we had to pull out so that's what's going on with that i think we're gonna have enough daylight we'll see oh i'm so ready to go swimming you guys it's been so hot i've been spending all my days out here trying to get the gardens ready and because we had to have the dead trees removed i was behind on weeding and whew, that has taken a toll so here is the back patio and I think I'm going to cut off and film this in the morning. All right, and here we are. We're back. It's the next morning. It's actually June 1st. Okay, so we're starting on the back patio. So as you see here, as we enter, I have the two pots here on the columns and two more to mirror them. And they are filled with the Super Bells Over Easy and Diamond Frost Euphorbia. Just a simple and sweet combination. I just think it's so lovely. It's just so pretty. Good morning, Miss Ellie, good morning. So the sun is already coming out fierce, fast and fierce as I'm just now getting out here to film. So I'm gonna try to rush this along and I'm sorry if it is rushed, but I do have to log in and work today. So, all right, so coming past these i have this pot this has some sweet alyssum in it that i sewed indoors myself and i love this little container it was here on the property when we moved in in here i have some sweet potato vine and some more white wave petunias oh just gorgeous let me come around here so we can see look how beautiful that is I absolutely love it. This patio, you guys, has to be just my favorite right now. It is just glorious. It is coming right along. Okay, coming back in. In this pot here, I have a Maui yellow, Maui yellow Exora that I purchased in the fall with my mom's. And you guys, it lived indoors over the winter because it is not hardy in my zone. And it loved it. And it's starting its first blooms yay so in this pot i also have some of the sweet alyssum that i sewed indoors so it's coming along this is a spring mix that i picked up in the spring at lowe's and it's doing just fabulous so i have started my fertilizing regime so i hope to keep that going strong <laughs> Oh, in here, I had sowed some pompous grass indoors, too, but um, I actually forgot about it, and it sat over here and dried out, so there's that. <laughs> these are more pots. I had sweet alyssum in all of these. I still do here and here, but this kind of just disappeared, so I'm going to have to find me some uh, petunias or something very colorful and pretty to put in there. Hello. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> and then in this pot here got my little grasshopper and some more white wave petunias you guys i cannot get over those white wave petunias they're just absolutely beautiful okay so now we're gonna swing back this way and these are my strawberry pods you guys and they're doing so good i've already eaten my first strawberry off one of these these are the bonnie strawberry plants i did sow my seeds indoors for strawberries but it was too late. I forgot about them. And anyway, I had to pick these up when I was out shopping. All right. So yeah, I'm going to need to clean this up. So I've got, just going to clean it up while I'm sitting here talking to you. <laughs> okay. And they're just doing so great. I'm so tickled. And I love the little white flowers that they get. So I had to move them. They were 
sitting here, but they weren't getting enough sun. And now they're just, oh, now they're just loving life. Um, this little pot down here, it also had sweet alyssum in there and it seems to have disappeared as well. So I'm going to have to put something else in there, some pretty bright petunias maybe. And then in here are the petunia violet wilds that I sowed indoors. You guys, let me tell you about this pot. It was not draining. It was full of water. I accidentally tumped the whole thing out trying to fix the drainage hole <laughs> in the bottom and I just stuffed everything back in and <laughs> this survived. I cannot believe it, but I think I'm going to get um, some uh, more petunias if I can find them at the garden center and pop them in there. So this will be more full, but that's what's going on with that. And then here's another one of the containers. These are newer, so they're not quite as full as these original guys, but they're going to catch up in, in no time. Just glorious. I love the way that looks. So, so pretty. So, this is one of my favorite spots as well. So, in the mornings, you can sit here before the sun blasts you. And I do love sitting here and having my coffee and looking out before the sun blasts you. And then, the sun comes. And that section over there starts all shade. And that's, then that becomes my favorite spot. <laughs> Until the evening. And then, we're back to the patio sitting. I just love it. I just love having different areas in the garden where you can come and sit and enjoy it, even when it's super, super, super warm. Okay, so here is my vegetable planter, and I just watered it, as you can tell. Um, I was watering it every other day as I was watering everything every other day, but I think this needs water every day, and I'll show you why, but this is my first time with a vegetable planter, so I'm learning. <laughs> and the new additions, here's my sweet basil, but new additions I put in here were some nasturtium seeds, the jewel mix. So this is the mix that has the yellow and oranges so they're starting to pop up there's one back there too so i just kind of sprinkled them all in here because the marigolds that i sowed inside i mean they're not dead but they're really not doing anything so i had some to stir some sheet seeds these are really coming up anyway oh that's just beautiful okay and this is tomato that i sowed indoors but it looks pitiful so next time I'm up at the garden center. I need to pick me up a plant if they still have any. I have some parsley I put in here, but I'm seeing no signs of it yet. So we'll just see. I had some seeds. And then this is my pepper that I did indoors, my green pepper. It's hanging on. And this is a sweet pepper by Bonnie Plants that I picked up and popped in here. And then here are some bush beans, green beans, that I put, put popped some seeds in here just a couple weeks ago and they're already coming up but see this is why i'm thinking i need to water this every day um because it is you know up off the ground uh, i don't know <laughs> living uh gardening and learning and here's some more of the uh, marigolds that i sowed indoors see they're just not doing very good so yeah some dwarf I put a little tag in here so i would know what these guys are dwarf uh jewel nasturtiums so they're not the big the big uh, version, they're the, the smaller version. So I thought those would be just really pretty and a, a good pop of color. So there's those. And then now we're going to come over this way. We'll start here. This has lemon coral seed in it and it's just doing fabulous. And it was so pretty when it was all first coming into bloom and had all the little yellow tops all over it. Just so pretty, but I love it. I love this little punch of green here down here on the patio. And then up here in my lady, I have a Boston fern. Now I planted her really early in the spring season and we got a cold snap. <laughs> yes, that we weren't expecting. And, um, it kind of felt it. So I still haven't cleaned her up, but she's doing a lot, lot better. So yeah, the fern is hanging in there, but it did not like the cold and it really got burned. And then here in my little cast iron bunny, I had just have some succulents and they're doing pretty good. Um, this doesn't have a drain hole and it's cast iron. So I decided to try some succulents in it. It's doing, working out pretty good so far. And then over here we have in these two pots, I have fairy trail hydrangeas and they're beautiful. This one got too much sun. I had it moved here and at the first of the season and it was really getting set on fire. <laughs> so I moved it here and it started budding up and blooming. 
So, I don't know. I may have to move it again, but I would just love to keep them right here. We'll see. But this one loves its life right here. Look. Just gorgeous. When I first... Hi, Ellie. Hi, Ellie. When spring first started coming, I put this in here. Now, it's totally all covered up. So, are you smelling those flowers? Yeah. We just smell it. We don't eat it. Yeah. And so, this one really loves it here. So, I'm just not even going to move the pot. And you can see it's got more buds coming all over it. Just, oh, so beautiful. I love the white and green together. This rug I picked up from Grandin Road on clearance, you guys. Um, I can't remember. I think it was just $15, actually. And I think it's so pretty. And I think it's, I love the cool colors in it just to bring us from spring and into summer. So, I love a versatile, cute rug, and I love the paisley, all about it. Okay, so in these pots here, I have, this is Monrovia a Sweet Potato Vine, and I didn't know if it would be too shaded to grow, but it's getting its grow on, so I'm happy about that, and I have some more sweet alyssum that I sewed indoors just tucked in here. We'll see how it does, but I would love for this Sweet Potato Vine, once it gets going, I'm gonna have it go up on these uh, little uh, pot trellises, so That'll be really pretty when that comes in. So, same thing over here. So, yeah, I am uh, judging the growth of these fairy trail hydrangeas based on these little little pot ornaments I put in here. <laughs> so, um, they're slowly getting covered up, so that's a good sign that that's a happy plant. These stone pavers were all around the shrubs that used to be there and I'm so happy those are gone. So I just used them um, here. I was gonna just let the grass grow in and then I decided no because I ordered those dwarf canna lilies and they are loving this full sun area. Since this tree is gone right here, this bed is fully exposed to full sun pretty much all day and this is where I had popped all those hydrangeas and they were not going to love that. Um, and all the little Annabelle starts were already not loving it here, even before. So, this is canna lilies, and I need to come and add some more um, compost in here. So, I need to pick some more of that up. So, these are yellow and pink um, dwarf canna lilies. And then I have put some bells of Ireland seeds down in here. It took me a minute. And I also did some more of the cream colored um, nasturtiums. They're just mounding nasturtiums and they're starting to pop up. Right there, there, and there. So that's going to look really, really good. I don't know if the bells of Ireland seeds are going to take. We'll see. I may pick up some petunias just to pop in in the middle here to just make sure there's some color on each side, just in case. But I kind of wanted to do a tropical meets cottage <laughs> right here. But here's the back of the patio, you guys. And it's just beautiful to me. I love when I'm in the pool area, I can just turn around and look back here. And oh, gorgeous. So we're going to the pool area and you can see I've moved my trellis here. And those shrubs are gone. Oh, I'm so happy. I was always afraid something was going to be in there and like jump out and grab me. <laughs> uh, I'm a city girl learning how to be in the country again. <laughs> okay, and then here, this is the honeysuckle that was living in that big pot with the fairy trail hydrangea. And it likes that I have moved it out here. So, it had some blooms the other day. It looks like it's getting ready to rebloom again. And then I've also seeded some blushing Susan vine. It's just an annual, but it's like a pinky color. And hopefully it'll come up and fill this all in before the wedding. So we'll see. Because the honeysuckle, I think it's called Sensation Honeysuckle. Um, it was a proven winner's one. But we'll see. So I love having this here to the entrance into the pool. I think it's going to be pretty. And I'll eventually find something to come up and cover it completely. All right. So coming in here, I put some sweet alyssum in here as well, but looks like only one is surviving along with some kind of weed. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, and here's the pots where I put the salvia and Super Tanya Vista bubblegum. This one, you guys, we got rain for like two days in a row. 
unbelievable because we were so dry. Anyway, this pot was not draining. So by the time I came out here and noticed it was holding water and got it to drain, it had completely killed the salvia and I don't know if this is going to recover. We do have some green, but I'm gonna have to try to find me some more and <laughs> fix this fix this tragedy right there. But that Super Tenia Vista bubblegum is beautiful. It's my first time planting that ever. So I really love it. So here's the pool. My husband just opened it and it's looking beautiful. Over here, I'll show you these two pots. I had sowed some uh, fountain grass indoors. And so, and I'm also going to get some super tunias to come in here. But I put these right here because I wanted to cover up this pool equipment. There used to be a palm tree right here, but it was dead. <laughs> so we had to move it. So now this is exposed, but you know, I'd like to cover that up because that's not really pleasant to look at. Um, being able to see that with the waterfall and stuff. So, and here is the fountain grass I sowed indoors and I hope it takes. I put like two two starts in each one and I've been watering it pretty regularly if it doesn't I will just pick some up at the nursery and then I'm going to add some like white super tunias in here so when we do have the wedding in October if my daughter would like to use these we can my husband can wheel these out of here <laughs> and uh, we can use them wherever she would like to place them and then don't mind that that's our pool vacuum more chairs the squirrels destroyed. So I've got to find some seat cushions for these. I need to come out here and just sweep and clean up and wipe the tables down. But these are the planters with sweet potato vine and the white wave petunias. And as you can see, they're doing fantastic. I think they're so, so pretty. So yeah, so this will, let me come around here. Okay, I'm gonna come around here. I had to stop the thing. I have to be careful because the deck needs some repairs in places. So, or we're gonna have it removed completely. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I wanted to come around here and get this view of this pot. So there we have it. And Ellie is investigating the pool cover. I hope you don't dig something out of there. All right, come on, sissy. So yeah, beautiful. So unfortunately, boy, I would love to get grab my pool noodles and just come out here and float, but I have to go log in to work. So that is going to wrap up my 1st of June garden tour. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you are having the best day wherever you are. Thank you so much for watching and adding color to my world.